my name is Kevin. I'm going to be your instructor for MAT 101, which is a distinctly different type of math class. I want to make a short introduction to some of the activities we'll be doing in the class, so you can get a, a visual idea of what's in store for you. I'm going to tilt the webcam down to my desk now, so I can show you what I mean. Let's briefly go through um, sort of like a teaser. So we're going to start out with estimation questions. Questions like, how many dump trucks does it take to move Mount Fuji? But after a couple of weeks of that warming up, we'll look at games like blackjack in casinos. And uh, how can you improve your odds at blackjack? What's the best way to play at blackjack? How is math related to this? How do you know how much to bet? As the cards keep getting played, how do card counters count cards? What's the mathematics behind it? What does it allow you to do? And what doesn't it allow you to do? Truth and fiction behind such movies as 21, which were pretty dramatized. We're also going to look at um, the Rubik's Cube. And uh, you're going to learn to solve it. You're going to have to solve it as part of your uh, course requirements. And we'll talk about patterns. We'll talk about the mathematics behind the Rubik's Cube. So there's sort of two parts of the cube, learning to solve it and then learning why the solution works and, and where that solution comes from. I always forget how to restore this particular one. There we go. Uh, another topic we're going to look at is um, geometric design or geometric art from around the world. And we'll do this in quite a few places. Um, but here are just some examples. The rough idea is that there's an underlying grid. So if you look at uh, this example, there are hexagons that are the scaffolding onto which the design rests. But the finished design doesn't hint uh, at any hexagons unless you use a mathematical eye to discover how this design was created. And uh, another example, uh, this particular pattern is pretty common. It's clearly made up of squares. You can see how I've taped squares together. But the finished design, the finished pattern, doesn't have any squares in it. It has these, uh, they're called rosettes. They look like flowers or stars or uh, there's some five-pointed stars, some, some octagons, some eight-pointed stars. How, how does this sort of stuff get created? What's the mathematics behind this? How can we use mathematics to make beautiful things? This is a question that unfortunately is not talked about in a, in a lot of math classes. It's all about mathematics um, to create uh, phones or bridges or signs or whatever. Here are a couple of student examples. So, you know, obviously uh, nice, nice student examples, things that people have done in the class. Um, they've had no previous experience with uh, Islamic art. And, uh, you know, yet they were able to make um, some really nice designs. And so this is the kind of thing you'll do as well. Uh, you'll have a finished design, but also the, uh, the work, if you will, the math um, that I can look at. Getting uh, more and more abstract in some ways, we'll look uh, around the world at sand tracing or sand drawing traditions. And we won't use sand, we'll just use markers and uh, pencils. But uh, we have a couple examples here. Uh, these two are from Eastern Angola. There's a culture there um, called the Shokwe uh, tribe. And uh, they have an elaborate sand drawing tradition we'll look into. And also, on the other side of the world, in the Pacific, um, here are just two very simple drawings um, from the Malakula who are part of the uh, archipelago nation of Vanuatu. And uh, we'll look at them. And you can see a trend in what we're doing here. The, the connection with mathematics is uh, growing a bit harder to see. But as the semester goes along, your ability to discern what's mathematical about it will improve through reading and discussions. Let me show you um, what the, one of the last topics in the course, which is the, the topic of... Uh, string figures. And uh, string figures, like sand drawing, there are no equations. There's really no notation. So that makes it harder for us to understand this mathematics based upon our experience in the classroom. But these are preliterate societies. So ask yourself, 
how would how would this, a society without a written language do mathematics? Because they would, most certainly. This could be a swan or a loon. You see the long neck in the head? And when the bird flies away, you're left with a... Uh, you're left with an empty pond. So this uh, loop of string in the center represents the empty pond. I'll do one more. These are, these string figures are just collections of algorithms, of variations, um, explorations of shape, space, procedure, reasoning. And you'll, you'll have to make some too. So this could be a dog. It is in some cultures that uh, runs to the side. So you have a figure which um, has some, you know, likelihood to the creature it represents, and it also has motion, so it can animate. Um, you can have more abstract figures too. Let me just show you one figure. Those two figures are from the uh, from North America, uh, Inuit. But let me show you one from the Pacific, in particular, a small island nation of Nauru. It's only eight and a half square miles um, in landmass. Their figures um, tend to be more geometric, a bit more abstract. Um, they have a highly developed string figure tradition. So let's see. This is supposed to be a flower of the tamano tree. The leaves are on the left and right, and the crisscrossing double-walled diamond in the center represents the flower. And uh, tamano isn't a mispronunciation of tomato. Uh, tamano is just a, a native tree to the island. So these are some of the topics we'll be looking at in 101. It's obviously a different course. Um, there's reading, there's writing, there's tactile, kinesthetic learning. Um, and there's the, the typical sort of, um, you know, numbers and shapes. So I look forward to uh, spending time with you, and, um, and I'll see you in just about a week.